what does the war in Gaza mean for the U.S. election? Will Kamala Harris pay for the Biden-Harris administration's support for Israel? Will Trump's promise of ending the war in Gaza sway voters? Well, on this episode of America Decides, we discuss all this and more as Palestine is definitely on the ballot box. And that could have some unexpected consequences. The Gaza war made a definite impact on the UK general election in July. The results in the UK saw an unprecedented number of independent MPs, all of them who had voice support for Palestine. They made it the unseated incumbents in Parliament. But that was the UK. How will the Gaza war affect the outcome on November 5 when Americans vote for the next president? While the answer to that question is uncertain, the latest news coming to us is that Donald Trump is leading Kamala Harris among Arab American voters. As per the Arab News YouGov poll, 45% of respondents said that they're most likely to vote for Trump in November's election, while 43% are likely to vote Harris. About 4% of the respondents said that they would vote for Green Party's candidate Jill Stein. Another 6% said that they were undecided, while 2% of the respondents declined to reveal their choice. Now, this poll surveyed 500 Arab Americans across the country in late September. But it aligns with another survey, which was done in early October by the Arab American Institute, where Trump had an edge, again, a narrow one, over Harris among Arab Americans. Now, so why is this important? Well, in a closely contested election like this one, every vote counts. In 2020, this Arab-American community overwhelmingly backed Joe Biden. But this time, the support has eroded significantly due to anger over the Biden-Harris administration's ongoing or continued support for Israel's offensives in both Gaza and now, of course, Lebanon. Realizing the importance of this vote bank, both Harris and Trump have been appealing to Arab-American voters, specifically in Michigan. A couple of days ago, both were out in full force in Swing State, Michigan. Why? Because it has a sizable Arab-American population. Both candidates are neck and neck here, and even a 1% vote swing will benefit the other. I know this year has been very difficult, given the scale of death and destruction in Gaza and given the civilian casualties and displacement in Lebanon. It is devastating, and now Sinwar's death can and must be a turning point. Everyone must seize this opportunity to finally end the war in Gaza, bring the hostages home, and end the suffering once and for all. And I continue to believe diplomacy is the answer to bringing lasting stability across the Israel-Lebanon border. Doesn't it more make it easier or more difficult? I think it makes it easier. What are you going to tell them? Well, look, he's doing a good job. Biden is trying to hold him back. Just so you understand, Biden is far superior to the, to the VP. Uh, he's trying to hold him back and they probably should be doing the opposite, actually. I'm glad that BB decided to do what he had to do, but it's, uh, it's more along. I'm now joined by Professor Scott Lucas, Professor of U.S. and International Politics at the Clinton Institute, University College, Dublin. Professor, Palestine definitely seems to be on the ballot box in the American presidential race this time. A new poll now says that Donald Trump is leading Kamala Harris by a, a sizable, a, a narrow, but definitely in a closely contested race like this one. It might be narrow, but then even a few votes make a difference. How do you, your, your first thoughts on this? I think that if you were to talk about America in general, foreign policy usually is not the leading issue uh, for voters. They vote on domestic issues, the economy, immigration, health care, uh, education, climate change. In this case, Donald Trump's threat to democracy. 
But for specific voters, an issue like Israel's mass killings in Gaza and now uh, the war in Lebanon, it could resonate with them. And of course, that's especially true of Arab American voters. Now, it so happens that the largest community of Arab American voters is in Michigan, which is one of the seven states that will decide the election and is very closely contested. It could be decided by tens of thousands of votes or even just thousands. So if Arab Americans swing against Harris, it could be decisive in the election. Right now, what we're seeing from this one opinion poll of 500 Arab American voters is that they are split. It's almost evenly split between Trump and Harris, whereas about 60% supported Joe Biden in 2020 versus only about 35% for Donald Trump. So yeah. it's not a huge swing. It's not a huge swing nationwide. But again, if a state like Michigan is closely contested, it could make the difference. It could really make the difference, especially because, as you pointed out, that 2020, uh, you know, there was a huge overwhelming support in favor of Joe Biden. And this time that support is missing for Kamala Harris. Why do you think this shift has occurred? Uh, is it because of, uh, you know, obviously uh, largely because of uh, the policies of the Biden-Harris administration? Well, I, you know, Arab Americans don't vote just on the Middle East. So you could say, for example, that there could be a shift because of the way they perceive the U.S. economy. It could be on other issues, but about 30 percent of Arab Americans uh, in this poll that was taken of the 500 voters said that uh, the issues around Israel and Gaza were the number one concern. So I think it's mm. fair enough to say that the Biden administration's, if not support of Israel in this conflict, their refusal to use leverage to curb Israel, especially limiting American military aid or calling for an unconditional ceasefire, that could weigh with a lot of voters. I think in addition to Arab American voters, there are some voters who you might mark out as being on the left of the Democratic Party, progressive voters who might not choose to support Donald Trump, but they might not turn out for Kamala Harris because of the Israel-Gaza issue. And that, I think, is almost an even bigger concern, their non-appearance at the polls, than a specific issue around Arab Americans when it comes to November 5th. Do you find it ironical that, especially given, um, you know, Trump's well-documented history during his uh, first term uh, of hostile rhetoric and policies towards Muslims? I, I just find it as being a case of that it's the administration uh, in power directly affected when something like this occurs. Had Donald Trump been in office, it's quite likely given his hostility to Muslims. Let's be very honest here. His derogatory comments about Islam uh, and about Arab Americans, that in combination with his support uh, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, and he repeated that support over the weekend. Yes, I think they would have swung against Trump, but he's not in power right now. He's in opposition so he doesn't carry the same responsibility for these voters that Kamala Harris might do. Yes, but uh, Trump has repeatedly said uh, that, you know, if he was in power and if he was the president, the Middle East war would never have happened. And frankly, between you and me, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, what has happened in the last four years are too many global conflicts, including the war in the Middle East, have happened during the Biden Kamala Harris watch. Trump always says, oh, no, no wars on my watch and I could solve any war or prevent any war that happens. That's not true. I mean, if you want to take the factual record, uh, there was an exchange of fire between Israel and Hamas in 2018. Not as serious as what we've had this year, but that occurred. Uh, Russia's assault on Ukraine has been ongoing since 2014, including yeah. during the Trump years. Uh, there were issues in the Middle East involving Iran. Indeed, Donald Trump almost, almost attacked Iran uh, in 2018, 2019. And Donald Trump threatened fire and fury against North Korea during his, uh, the early part of his administration. The idea that Trump stops wars or that they, uh, that they don't occur under his watch is a falsehood. Similarly, when you look at the Biden-Harris 
administration. And I do think they have been at fault in terms of their policy on Gaza. Uh, Vladimir Putin did not start war, the full invasion of Ukraine in 2022, because Biden and Harris happened to do this. He was determined to overrun Ukraine. The tensions between Israel and Gaza and Hamas, uh, those escalated and broke loose with Hamas's mass killing in October 2023, irregardless of who was in office in the U.S. So it's a cheap political line. And it's just not true that Donald Trump is the only person who can stop wars. If anything, Trump's rhetoric and Trump's unpredictability is more likely to fuel conflict if he was to get back into the White House rather than limited. Beyond the opinion uh, and the obvious irony of the Arab Americans' growing support for Donald Trump, who is always the Democratic candidate, in this case, Kamala Harris, the fact remains that in a key swing state like Pennsylvania, uh, winning the Arab American support made all the difference between winning and losing. Would you say that? I, I don't think the issue, it's a very diverse state in terms of rural versus urban vote, in terms of black vote, in terms of other ethnic minorities, as well as the white vote, in terms of the youth vote versus uh, the older generation. In Michigan, I think it's different, and that's because you have a concentration of. Sorry, I, 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 sorry, I think I said Pennsylvania, and I should have said Michigan. My bad. Also, I'll frame it as if I'm answering on Michigan. I do think that you have a special case in Michigan, which is that you have uh, conservatively speaking more than two hundred thousand Arab American voters there. The numbers could be even higher than that, and quite clearly, when Michigan has been decided by in 2016 and in 2020 by far less than 100,000 votes. Those votes make a difference. Uh, but I don't think we can predict what can happen. I mean, I don't think we can say that all Arab American voters are going to stay home or vote for Trump because of Gaza, yeah. because they will have concerns like health care, like climate change, like the economy. And inflation. Um, yeah, they, they'll have all those that basket of issues that they will be concerned about. Uh, and so you might have a diverse vote. You know, it might split 50-50 between Trump and Harris. It might favor one or the other. What I would say to you is, and this is a broader statement about the U.S. election, it's a toss-up. It's a toss-up election precisely because there are so many different layers in terms of the issues that are out there, including the Middle East, that the seven swing states, uh, Michigan is one of them, in each of those seven swing states, the gap between Harris and Trump is less than 2%. And in five of those seven states, it's less than 1%. And that doesn't bode very well for either of the two candidates, really. Nobody knows what's going to happen. I, you know, I think it's, it's a reality that America is a country which uh, is quite diverse, but it's also a reality that it has tended to polarize. Uh, between what we loosely call the red and the blue states, the Republican and the Democratic states. But I think the problem here is, is that the American media is treating so, this so much as a horse race or so much as a spectacle that because they're fixated on it uh, in terms of like uh, appearances, they aren't actually discussing the issues in detail. I mean, I don't think the, the US media has done justice in terms of the Israel-Gaza issue, in terms of the complexity of it, in this race. I don't think they've done that more broadly with the Middle East. And indeed, since I'm speaking to you in India, I don't think they've actually covered India at all, for example. Um, and I could say that about domestic issues as well. I think the US media has been negligent in that uh, they have treated Donald Trump as a spectacle, uh, almost as a snake oil salesman, which he is. And because they don't cover the issues, they turn this into a toss-up race where we don't know what is going to happen, not only on November 5th, we don't know what will happen with health care, with education, with the American system itself. There needs to be a lot greater care and responsibility amongst the U.S. media, both in terms of how it covers elections and in terms of how it covers the Middle East. All right. Thank you for those views. Thank you for your time. Uh, with. Uh... Thank you. I mean, of course, we'll come back to you and have more conversations as we get closer to the race. But thanks. This is what we were going to discuss about today.